come on here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. Last time, we continued our exploration of the land inside the dome, which we now know is called Alexandria. After meeting their queen, Sphine, who rules alongside Galul, or, uh, Zerulja. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm smelling a rat here. See, I kind of did the math, and, okay, so here's the thing. They have these lovely little devices that can bring someone back from the, an untimely death, but unfortunately to do that, it costs a soul. And where do they get these souls? From people who die natural deaths. And everybody's wearing one of these things. The math ain't adding up here. Ugh. Something's rotten in the heart of Alexandria. Also, we met uh, Arenvel's mother. Well, kind of. We met the little RC robot she pilots. I haven't found the real her yet. Anyway, next main quest, Embracing Oblivion. Oh dear. I trust you've gained an insight into the use of souls in Alexandria. It's shocking, I know. I was overwhelmed myself at first. I expect you'll need some time to digest it all. But for now, let's head back to Earth and Sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a little f lovely first-hand demo. At this rate... Hmm? There's something I want to discuss with everyone. Let's take a moment before we head into the tunnel. Okay. Huh. I'm sorry for delaying us, but I have some thoughts I need to share. In both technology and values, it's plain there's a wide gulf between Tuliolal and Alexandria. And while Zalalja knows everything about us, we know hardly anything about what he's become. Indeed, we haven't even seen what lies within that enormous tower, Everkeep. Mm-hmm. So here I'd like to make a proposal. That is, we work with Kasia and her people. We need to learn as much as we can about the enemy. The quickest way would be to join hands with Oblivion. We've only just met them, I know, and we shouldn't be too quick to trust. But the fact remains that they share our desire to stop Zoralja. Sphine, too, claims to be at odds with the King of Resolve. May I ask why you would cooperate with Oblivion instead? Hmm? It's simple, really. Their leader is Edinburgh's mother. Meanwhile, whatever Sphine may feel, she's a ruler of this nation. There's a greater risk in working with her, and less reason to take her at her word. A fair point. And knowing Zorolja, we must assume that his arrangement with Sphine was not made without some consideration. All I know is that it would be heartening to have allies in this strange realm. I think everyone would agree that any help we can get would be welcome. That is true. That is very true. Hold on. There's no guarantee that it's actually my mother behind the machine. Without seeing her in the flesh, we can't rule out the possibility of a ploy. If it turns out to be a trap, we endanger not only ourselves, but everyone in Tuli Olal. As you say, we have no proof that it really is Kakia. But I make my proposal in full awareness of this. Hmm? Whether we're going to war or striving for peace, we need to learn as much as we can. Otherwise, we can't hope to do anything meaningful. As it stands, we know too little about this realm. We need to remedy that. We need to study the enemy. And when the time comes, strike down Zorolja for good and all. Ah, not bad. What's more? Hmm? I trust you, Erinven. You've always had great instincts, born from your time training under your mother. But if I'm wrong, what this sentiment is clouding my judgment? Eh, if it's a trap, then we'll deal with it when it's sprung. I trust you as well. <laughs> I like this one better. I mean, we can deal with the trap regardless, but yeah, I trust you, Aaron Bell. Ah, <sighs> that's always the way of it with you. Fine, if you'll set on this, I'll say no more. Good. No, not there. I'm a little surprised. Then it's settled. Let's hit inside and secure ourselves some new allies. Dang, still no nod. And we're just jumping from one cutscene to another here. Cassia, there's something I need to tell you and your people. We came here for no other reason than to strike down Zoralja. <laughs> Why are you so surprised at this? But I thought he was your brother. Yeah, but then he murdered her father, so... Do you really mean to kill your own kin? My kin invaded our nation and murdered our people. As vow of resolve, it forced me to bring him to account. 
I am prepared to do what I must, and I won't hesitate when the time comes. Well, that's good. Like us, you and yours oppose the Ralja. In light of this, I propose that we work together to stop him once and for all. Hmm. I realize that this is sudden, that it's a gamble to trust somebody you've only just met. But I would trust in the conviction of anyone who shares my goal. So fight with me, I beg you. As you say, our goals align, and I don't doubt your resolve in the least. If you hadn't proposed working together, I would have done so instead. Truth be told, it's been tough going at it alone. While we've gathered ample intelligence, we don't have the strength to take decisive action. Oh, strength we've got, trust me, ma'am. Besides, how could we not trust you? My only son is with you, my fussy little Bun Bun. He's all the reason I need. <laughs> well, there you have it. Things decided. Here's to a fruitful collaboration. Good. Thank you, Garcia. Everyone, together we'll achieve great things, I'm sure of it. Then let's not waste any time. We've been wondering about Zorolta's whereabouts. Is there a palace inside that tower? After a fashion. The king resides on the uppermost level, but while Queen Sveen has a penchant for going out in public, he seldom shows himself. Eh, no surprise there. What's more, his movements are highly classified. Not even his commanders are privy to that information. If anyone knows where he is at any given time, it could only be the queen. Hmm. Even if we don't know his whereabouts, Zorolja will eventually march on Tulioal again. That's when we can go after him. The drawback is we'd have to wait for the invasion to happen. Innocence would be put in harm's way. Uh, nuts to that. There's also the possibility that he'll leave everything to his minions and not command the army in person. Hmm. Sounds like we gotta go storming that tower and go look for him. No, he'll take the field. What makes you so certain? My brother has always yearned to surpass our father. That's why he attacked Tuli Oral. After waiting for 30 years, the first thing he wanted to do was demonstrate his newfound strength. But killing Papa didn't satisfy him, so now he's bent on proving himself stronger than me and Kwana, who bested him in the right of succession. He challenged me to strike him down. He wants a duel to show everyone that he's superior to the Dawn Servant, and he won't let his minions deprive him of the pleasure. That's why he hasn't appeared and given you your chance? Surely he's aware of our present here. Hmm. At that, I can only guess. Perhaps he wants to dazzle us with his one that is realm. But if you won't deign to appear, then we'll force him to do so. Huh. Interesting thought. Even as we gather intelligence, we make no move to attack him. Show absolutely no interest in the confrontation. Knowing him, he tired of waiting and turned his attention to Quada instead. He'll attack Tuliolal again. Just like he said he would. I see. If you believe that this is the best approach, then we have no objections. Any campaigns against Tuliolal requires that Zorolja lead his forces through Vanguard. We'll have lookouts keep an eye on it day and night. Huh. Such a strategy is certainly viable. If we're proceeding with it though, we should warn those outside. Indeed, they'll need time to prepare the defenses. I should be glad to coordinate our efforts. I'm already in regular contact with the Stola, and we'll make sure to keep our comrades apprised of developments. Good. You can leave Vanguard to us. We'll send word at the first sign of movement. <laughs> it seems we have a plan. While we wait for Zorolch to move, you do well to prepare for battle, and it begins with familiarizing yourselves with the technology that empowers him. To that end, I'll show you to Oblivion's main headquarters. Oh? Oh? I thought this place was it. <laughs> You'd be impressed to know that we're located right inside that tower in the residential district of Solution 9. Huh. Well, the Queen did offer us to show us around the place. Hiding a tree in the forest, as it were. 
The only question is how to get you through the checkpoint. Ah, about that. Sven said she'd make it so we could enter without issue. She did? Curious. She's not supposed to have such authority over the centuries. If I recall correctly, her words were that she would register us as guests. I see. Perhaps we're in the clear then. When you're ready, come and meet me at the tower entrance. Hmm. So we're gonna get to see Mommy Dearest in person, I imagine. Before you head out, give us a moment to introduce ourselves properly, eh? After all, names are good to know when working together. That is true. Can't just always call you Hey You. Doesn't work. Everybody thinks they're Hey You. It gets confusing very quickly. Alright. While Oblivion has operatives all over, we're the main crew here. I'm Geode, the leader of this high out. And the dependable young twins behind me are Nostalgia and Wayakwe. I'm Nostalgia. A pleasure to meet you. My sister and I were born and raised inside the barrier. We've been with Oblivion for three years, and our main duties are surveillance and provisioning. Twins, eh? That explains the resemblance. Wayaki is a Twaten name, unless I'm mistaken. That's right. Our mother is Turiolalan, and our father is Alexandrian. They wanted to honor both cultures. Hm. They're beautiful names. So thank you. Though I have no memories of my mother, I like to think I carry a part of her with me. Oh. So, what made you decide to join Oblivion? Hmm. We wanted to avenge our father. Oh? What happened to her father? Ambrose was his name, and years ago he was taken away after a scuffle with a soldier over a disagreement. It was a minor incident, so at first we clung to the hope that he'd be released. But when months went by with no word from or about him, we made the decision to remove our regulators. We had already lost the memories of our mother. We didn't want to lose those of our father as well. They've all forgotten about him now. Everyone who had known him. That bastard! Even here he thinks nothing of his own people! Sometime later, we were approached by a member of Oblivion. Hoping to get justice for our father, we joined the Order. Huh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk in the mood. No, no, I appreciate you sharing this. Together, we'll avenge your father. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Something tells me you have what it takes. You introduce yourself, too. Go on. Um, I'm pretty much the same story for me. And while mine is Ton Huanten name, I haven't the faintest how things are outside the barrier. It's my dream to go and see it with my own eyes. Our mother's homeland. Once peace is restored, you must come and visit. The wilds are beautiful, the food delicious, and everyone is so nice. You'll love it there. Aww. Oh. <laughs> and that's us here. You'll meet others in the back room. That's our headquarters. Some of them are a little, well, eccentric, but they have good hearts all. Ah, and a sheepa. One last thing. It isn't exactly my place to say this, but thank you for seeking out Kalkia. She talks about you so much, it's clear how important you are to her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's all. Be good to your mother while you still can, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll let you go now. Feel free to use this hideout as you like. Well, rather nice of you. Meanwhile, in Everkeep... Which we haven't even gotten to see the inside of yet. Whoa. Soul storage, I imagine. Hmm. Seralja and Sphin, huh? You've been consulting with Wook Lamott. Damn, just straight come out and say it. <laughs> No matter. I do not know what you are scheming. But when your realm lay on the brink, you were powerless. You had no choice but to turn to me. Mm -hmm. That's not the way she told it. Whatever sentiment you may feel for her, 
It is my power you require. Is it not? Oh. Is this gonna be the thing I thought of at the beginning of this episode and between episodes? They're running out of souls. They need human souls, so they're gonna start invading other realms. Ours, first of all, and start going on a cleaning spree. Perhaps. And yet, knowing the love that Wublamart bears for her people, how she regards them all as kin, I cannot help but wish to spare her the same pain I have suffered. What's more, her friends possess new knowledge. Were we to work together, we might find another path. Hmm? I know you're loath to consider it, but is there no hope for peace with Tuliolo? What we've already done may be unforgivable, but it needn't continue. You needn't kill your brother and sister. Damn. I slew my only flesh and blood. Yet you attempt to sway me with an appeal to family. The memory of my father's final moments still fills me with disappointment. Age came for him before I did. For long years, I sought to prove the miracle. And weak as he was, defeating him achieved nothing. Jeez. To kill them is my only recourse. Wuklamat and Kona, who bested him as he was in his prime. Oh, that's what's rankling him still? The freaking shade? They are still your siblings, even if not by blood. That such bonds should mean so little to you. I am bound to no one. Serve none, save myself. I made that clear when first you spoke to me in the Golden City. Hmm? Remember, I could easily kill your beloved family. If you would protect them, cast aside any foolish notions. Oh. Your wisdom and abilities are valuable insofar as Argos align. So think well before you act, Queen of Reason. <sighs> Oof. Uklamat. If you are father's worthy successor, then you will find your way to me. But should you fall short, I will lay waste to Tuli Yolal. Yeah, I'd rather we stop him before he starts the attack. What now? Hmm. What now indeed? Well, that was a sobering little cutscene. Solution 9! Ooh, finally get to see this city. Right, Kokia is waiting. Let's head to the tower. Alright. There it is. This is what you call one of them pain in the ass ether currents. <laughs> Seriously. This thing. Kind of irritating to get to. Because I didn't see a solid, you know, actually, I actually could have come up this way. That would have been easier. I was coming from here and I started following my compass and the compass. And by the time I realized, oh, wait, it's probably on top of this cliff. I was already down here. So I had to come all the way around and up. But yeah, I probably could have just come from here. That would have been so much easier. Finally made it to the city. Thankfully, it really wasn't that difficult to get here from the etherite. There you are. If Queen Sveen has registered you as guests, you should be able to march right in. And if she hasn't, then you'll probably wish you had regulators on. Then you may have a swarm of Zoraja's minions to deal with. Jeez. Ah, nothing for it but to see if Sveen has but data, eh? Yep. Maybe I should go first. I imagine as a little robot, they're not gonna even bother you at all, are they? 
Thank you for your diligent service, friends. My companions and I would like to pass if you'd be so kind. Outrunner guide unit identified. Registration number verified. Six accompanying civilians identified. Verifying credentials. Verifying credentials. Still verifying credentials. Hmm. Hmm. Credentials verified. Welcome, guests of Queen's Queen's Fiend. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, what a relief! Mm-hmm. There. There you have it. It seems the Queen was true to her word. Follow me, everyone. Solution Nine awaits. My other hub town, if memory serves, from the uh, promotional material. And probably the one like Rods of Han, where we're going to be doing a lot of our hangout. Hmm. Whoa. Ooh, not bad. Wonder if they take Gil here. Whoa. Everty, a tower of electrop piercing a perpetual shroud of storm clouds. Dude, this place is Occupying awesome. the ninth level of this 12-tiered structure is a residential district called Solution 9. In so naming their home, what hopes did its founders harbor for it? And did it prove the answer they sought? Damn, man. I would live here. This is awesome looking. <laughs> this is such a cool area. Dude, we stick out like sore thumbs here. Spectacular, isn't it? There are more districts throughout the tower, including industrial ones, but Solution 9 is the largest. Ah. Just being here makes my head spin. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly natural reaction. A city of shimmering electro, replete with strange technologies that cater to every conceivable need. We never dreamed of the light back home in Tuliolo. That's true enough. Oh, I wonder if we could find Carl's parents. Now, while I go and explain the situation to those in the back room, why not take a moment to explore? Hmm. I believe lived experiences are far more educational than dry explanations. Hmm. And you want to know more about Sveen and Zoralgia's dominion, do you not? Very true. Very true. You had me at explore. We do need to better understand who and what we're dealing with here. No, I want to go wander. This place looks amazing. I had a feeling you'd be keen. I mean, who wouldn't be? Look at this place. Just to confirm, while we have been allowed inside, are we also permitted to roam? Absolutely. As Spain's registered guest, you'll find you're exempt from the sentry scrutiny. Oh, good. Ah, the elevator to the uppermost level. I wouldn't go near that. But other areas should be fine, provided you act like you belong. Hmm. Don't be a tourist. Gotcha. All right, then. We'll show ourselves around. Yes. Familiarizing ourselves with the technology here will help us prepare for the battles to come. Oh, don't be shy, Graha. You just want to try the local cuisine. Try not to enjoy yourselves too much, or you're liable to attract attention. <laughs> Once you've explored to your satisfaction, Come to the entrance to True View in the Eastern Sector. Huh. The way from there is a little complicated, so I'll send someone to guide you. Hmm. Understood. We'll see you later. Nice. Alright, let's go explore town. I'm sure there's uh, etherite shards I gotta pick up. I shall speak with the residents. Perhaps one of them will recognize the earring. Oh, that's true. Or it could also be very generic. You know, it is just a three-leaf clover. 
What's with this place? How can this all be the inside of a tower? <laughs> the tower is just that big. So, what aren't you telling me? Where are you? That, I can't reveal yet. Precautions, you understand? Just know that I'm safe. Mm. <sighs> but come, tell me about your adventurer friend. You seem to have a great deal of faith in him. <laughs> you must have been through a lot together. Oh yeah. You might say that. For instance, we found the entrance to the Golden City. Yeah, the Golden City you're now in, apparently. Oh my goodness. Those two, I swear. Um, you want to explore together? Sure. It's not that I'm scared or anything. Everything is just so different from home is all. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Come on. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, she is a goober. Towers inside her tower. I see it, but I still can't believe it. Hmm. For now, I say we proceed straight ahead. If we feel like we're getting lost, we can always turn around and go back the way we came. Eh, that's true. Alright, let's see what the map looks like. It is... Hmm. It's not too bad. Sights of the West and Beyond. There's a quest here? A blue quest. Oh, there's another blue quest. Dawn of a New Deal. Why can't I pick that up? Weird. More, more importantly, how do I get to those zones? Looks like there are uh, quite a few that are cut off. Dude, look at this crazy ass etherite. It kind of reminds me of a big ass Allegan tombstone. Too far away. How is this too far away? If I get too close, I'm gonna fall through. All right, Wook, what do you got? Ah, a crossroads already. This place is too much. I have no idea where I should go. Right, I've made up my mind. Let's head to that building there. What building where? Oh! Why does that look like it's gonna be a big shopping mall on the inside? Ah, I see crafters hard at work. Commerce sector, even. It is a giant shopping mall, isn't it? <laughs> ah! There you are! La Mati! Sveen? Oh. Sveen? I was worried you might have had trouble at the checkpoint, but I see everything went according to plan. Mm-hmm. Well, that's thanks to you. Yep. Now, I know you've scarcely arrived, but I have a request to make of you. Okay. Oh, a request, you say? Yes, an important one. Oh? This is going to be completely goofy, isn't it? Judging by the music. Oh, come on, don't keep me waiting. I'll say it plain. I want you to make peace with Zeralja. Oh. That might be difficult, considering Zeralja literally has no interest in peace. What? I thought you said you weren't on his side. We have come no closer to seeing eye to eye, nor do I condone his methods. Be that as it may, I don't want you to fight him. I don't want you to regret a decision made in anger and haste. Unequipped with regulators as you are, the risk is too great. <sighs> Ma'am, I have been through goodness knows how many fights with how many different cosmic beings, unholy beasts, and freaking gods. And I have never once needed a little regulator. I have white mages for that shit. 
I appreciate your concern, but you ask the impossible. Also, occasionally I double as a white mage. Zorolja murdered our father. His minions slaughtered our countrymen. He will never renounce his war. As vow of resolve, it falls to me to stop him. I know you love your people too. And so you must understand how I feel. Why I cannot, will not back down. Mm-hmm. I do understand. All too well. Let me say only this then. Zoralja will use any means to win. If you would protect your people, return to them at once and prepare. Prepare as best you can. Uh. It may ring hollow coming from the queen of an enemy nation. But unlike me, you still have the power to determine your own fate. Huh. Interesting. You really are a curious one. I have to agree with that. Look, you needn't worry for us. We have dependable comrades holding the fort in Tulichola. They'll yeah, keep brother. everyone safe, <laughs> so we can devote our attention to affairs here. Mm-hmm. Please. Never fear, I'll be there alongside her. I won't yield on the side of it now. No, we got this. Well, I've got this, at least. So you have comrades on whom you can rely. I am for you. Huh. Interesting. You know, we'd like to learn more about you. About me? Yes, you. To be frank, we're still not sure whether or not you're trustworthy. So, if you have a moment, would you show us around the district? That way, we can get to know you better. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> you're asking me, the queen, to show you around? Yes, the queen, the one who seems to know everybody, even in the outskirts. But I jest. I'm flattered that you've taken an interest in me. Very well. I shall be your guide. You're my guests, after all, and teaching you about my realm would be a pleasure in and of itself. Hm. If you like, I can introduce you to my citizens, too. Mm -hmm. I consider them family, as you do yours. That's true. You do seem to care about <laughs> them. By all means, we're in your capable hands. That you are. This will be an enjoyable and enlightening tour. I promise. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Cue a five hour long montage of her showing us all her favorite shoe shopping spots. <sighs> Never mind. No, that's terrible. I apologize for that. No. I'm sure she knows plenty of other good shopping spots besides shoes. <laughs> all right, Sveen. Give us the Queen's tour. Let's begin then, shall we? I must say I'm really grateful. This place is so vast and confusing, I didn't even know where to begin. <laughs> hmm? While the district may seem daunting in size and structure, all the key facilities are situated near lay nodes, what you call etherites. Remember this and you won't lose your way. Very convenient, that. Lay nodes, huh? At least they still function the same, because I've been able to attune to them. Now then, seeing as it's right here, I'll show you the Nexus Arcade first. Please follow me. Arcade? Arcade? Ma'am, you now officially have my attention. I love a good arcade. Oh, I, I suppose we mean the other version of arcade. Oh, I see some vehicles for show. It is a mall. It is a giant freaking mall. This complex is home to all manner of shops. 
From food and daily necessities to technological conveniences, you can find most everything here. Everkeep's interior is vast as you've observed. This arcade makes it possible for people to acquire what they need in one centralized location. <laughs> Amazing! How do you get to the upper levels? I don't see any stairs. Oh! Do you see the glowing pattern over yonder? That is an automatic conveyor! Such contraptions are found throughout Everkeep, allowing us to swiftly move between faraway places. Portable teleporters, got it. That will spare us some walking. Are oh, they also made from that strange metal? Elec- what's it? <laughs> yes, the conveyors are powered by Electro. As a matter of fact, the ore is integrated into just about everything in Everkeep, even the floors and walls. Hmm. Damn. Stuff must be abundant on your world. By etching arcane such circuits upon it, Electro can be used to convert lightning energy to those of other elements. In so doing, we can achieve various effects. For instance, a conversion to wind produces rotation, which is required for the propulsion of our flying vehicles. A conversion to fire, meanwhile, produces light and heat, and is employed in devices such as street lamps and heaters. There are even self-eating cups to keep your drink warm. Dang. Can you make a drink cold if you convert it to ice instead? Oh, you certainly can! Our vending machines do just that! What's more, multiple energies can also be combined to produce some clever effects. For instance, by manipulating the air with wind while producing light with lightning, it's possible to alter one's appearance. Oh? It's almost scary what you can do with Electro. If such a wondrous material existed in our world, I imagine everyone will be fighting over it. That's an interesting look all of a sudden, ma'am. Hmm? That was weird. Is this shop over here? What does it sell? Ah, yes! Let's go and take a look. I dare say you will find it interesting. Huh. That was uh, an interesting reaction to the question of the electrobe. I was thinking originally the natural resource on their world. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something else. Why won't you talk to me, miss? Hmm? Ah, disciple hand or land of level 90 or above. Okay. What do you want? This shop sells food. Those are the items on the counter. That's food? I can't imagine what they taste like. <laughs> I thought you might be surprised. Your countrymen were too at the beginning. Come, you must sample something. Choose one and I'll purchase it. Welcome, friends. How lucky you are for Her Majesty to treat you. The five items on display are our most popular. I recommend one of them if this is your first time. Well, I'm curious. Oh. Why does this all look like vacuum packaged food? Select an item that interests you. Slab of pink hexagons, liquid filled pouch, long rectangular bar, hexagon pattern bag, black and yellow tin. Let's start from the left and see what we got. The synthetic fruit pellets, the uh, best approximation of the taste and texture of grape. I've never tried the real fruit, so I can't say how faithful they are, but there's no denying their popularity. Synthetic grapes. Hmm. What's this? Ah, the revivifying tonic. I take it you're thirsty. The flavor is a sublime blend of sweet and salty, and it stays fresh for oven 10 years thanks to the special container. Oh, it stays fresh for over 10 years. Huh. Okay, what's the bar? Keen on the perfect meal bar, are you? It's all the nutrients your body needs packed into a single foodstuff. The flavor is formulated to never taste dull, and one bar will satisfy you for a whole day. Many folks prefer this to taking multiple meals. Hmm. That sounds convenient. If a little bland. Ah yes, the salad paste. This is designed for those who are concerned about their figure. With its blend of nine varieties of vegetables, it'll help your efforts to slim down. Fashion models swear by it, and youths can't get enough of the stuff either. Huh. 
salad paste. What's the tin here? This here is cultivated steak. It's not quite the same as the real thing they produce in the outskirts, but it's a sight more affordable. This particular product is known as Gold Label, and it's a delicious hybrid of beef and chicken grown at the plant on the fourth level. Ah, mystery meat. <laughs> Which one sounds the most appealing? I'm gonna be honest, I would try the meal bar. I would be very curious how this tastes. Wow, they're all very tempting. I'm going to have the steak. I'm absolutely starving. Oh, so she picks on her own, huh? Thank you for your custom. This being Her Majesty's Street, it's bound to taste all the better. Say, would you mind sampling your selections here and now? It's been a long time since we had newcomers, and I'd love to see your reactions. Oh. Apparently we're drawing a crowd here. Dude, the fashion sense around here is real. Oh, this is a good chance to learn about Alexandrian culture, Decamon. Let's dig in. Oh, joy. All right, here I go. Cut to both of us turning green immediately. Following Lukamot's lead, you sample your selection. Hmm. It's not bad. I can almost go... Amazing! I've never had any meat like this before! It's tender like chicken, but flavorsome like gonik, and the spices give it just the right amount of kick. I could eat this every day. <laughs> Like I said, the fashion around here is real. Huh, don't mind them. They're just happy to see your honest reaction. And how about you? How was my meal bar, hmm? It's fantastic. It's pretty good. It's interesting. Hmm. You know what? I'll say it was fantastic. It was amazing. I can't get enough of them. <laughs> my character didn't turn green at least. That's a plus side. <laughs> it's always such a pleasure. My thanks for humoring me. Oh, this does take me back. Though it was chaotic when the people of Tuli Yolau first arrived, we endeavored to learn about one another and embraced our differences. That's good. Hopefully you didn't start turning them all to soul batteries afterwards. All right, what about you, Sveen? Aren't you having something to eat too? Huh? I appreciate the thought, but I'm fine for now, thank you. All right, but what's your favorite food, if you don't mind me asking? My favorite food? Hmm? Why do you wish to know this? Because I want to get to know you better. Why else? The more you know someone, the more you grow fond of them. That's what my own man believed, and my experiences have led me to believe the same. My favorite food? Oh, come on, you have to have a favorite. Is it such a difficult question? It might be if she never eats. I'm sorry, it's just... When I think of those who labor to bring us the food, I find I can't settle on one thing. <laughs> I thought I was indecisive, but you're something else. Indecisive? Oh, perhaps I am. But you didn't need to laugh about it. Ah. Hmm? Baby lizard! Baby lizard? Baby lizard! Oh, he's gone. Pooh. I thought he would still be there. I don't know about you, but I'm satisfied. Let's keep on moving. Hey, well. Next time's thinking of showing you the residential sector, but it's in part so I can tend to personal matters. It's a visitation to be precise, and I believe it'll be educational for you as well. Would the two of you mind accompanying me? Not at all. Wonderful. Let me know when you've seen enough here, and we'll make our way. Hmm. Well, before I leave, I better make sure I grab the, uh, the ether rights that are over here. Oh, I just realized this one's called Residential Sector, so we'll just do this one on the way, because I am imagining on the way is where we're going next. Ready? 
then let's head to the residential sector. It lies to the southwest. As we walk, I'd be glad to tell you about any place of interest that you come upon. Oh. I'm gonna be followed for a wee bit, huh? But I don't see any places that you want to actually talk about. Here's our destination. This is a cool looking place. Is this uh, some kind of bar or a tavern? This is Mosaic, a cafe. Here you can buy drinks to enjoy while you relax. I see. In Tuleola, there's a similar establishment called the Brava Tea. That's seashell in the local tongue. Is there a story behind the name Mosaic? Oh, there is. In our continent, the races are named for stones. There's the Hune, who resembles some toilet water, the tall and graceful Eldite, and the diminutive and affable Milana. When they all gather here, they appear as a mosaic of colors. Thus did the founder choose to name the cafe. Heh, <laughs> that's nice. If they serve tacos here, it'd be perfect. Tacos? A traditional Tarali dish, and one of my favorite foods. You must try it one day. Oh, uh, yes, definitely. We'll make it happen once we've restored peace to Tole Olal. Right, let's continue on. More and more, I'm starting to wonder if Sphine isn't a living being, but some sort of construct. Hmm. I'd have my suspicions about the rest of the people here, but they eat, they drink, they die. So I'm wondering if it's just Sphine. Hmm. Ah, here we are. These buildings are where our citizens live. They're massive. Each one is bigger than the palace. Oh, they have to be, for just about all Alexandrians have apartments here. Lest you wonder, I'm here to visit some people. Their apartment is in the building on the left here, at residential radius 9-14. Residential radius? Oh, that's right. Come, the door opens automatically. Huh. Handy. Here we are, residential radius 9-14. And a chance to talk to people. This is the lobby, a common area for residents. I see. And what does that machine there do? Ah, the concierge. You look after the residents. If you require assistance or have questions, they would be glad to assist. Ah, is that so? I have no shortage of questions, but I'll direct them at you for now. But by all means, you may consider me your personal concierge. Huh. Do I get a separate conversation if I start with Wook? He's fine. Can anyone live in this place? Oh, naturally. In fact, many of your countrymen make their homes here. No matter your origin or race, occupation or regulator usage, all Alexandrian citizens are eligible for an apartment. That includes those who meet who work in the outskirts. You've taken care of everyone for 30 years. I'm truly grateful. Ah, cool. I was a little one. I was wondering there. There was every chance it would just be the same conversation, but clearly not. All right, let's see who you're here to meet. This is the place. A mother and son live here. Hmm? Oh. Mommy not doing good? That's a son? Hmm. Sorry, it's the hair. I think it threw me for a minute. Hello, Isadora! Your Majesty, you came! I have friends with me today. Is it alright? Of course. Friends of the Queen are friends of ours. Please, make yourselves at home. Hmm. It's a nice little place. How has Milos been? Oh, that is the mother. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Assumptions were made, assumptions were broken. There's been no change, but the symptoms are thankfully mild today. Symptoms? What's he got? Hello, Milos. Have you missed me? My son was born with Levin sickness, a severe etheric imbalance towards lightning. As a result, he suffers from paralysis. He cannot walk and struggles to speak. Huh. Etheric imbalance, you say? Huh. Maybe I should grab Alice and her pork seat to come fix this. For a blessing, he still has his hearing, and even on bad days he can communicate with his eyes. I see. 
Sphine visits often, does she? She does. Milo simply adores her. He sometimes even manages a smile when she's here. Darn. What of yourself, Isadora? How are you holding up? Oh, you needn't worry about me, Your Majesty. You always make time for us, and we have everything we need. Mm hmm. I'm glad to hear that, but you mustn't strain yourself, understood? Huh. There's nothing you can do for him? Perhaps a treatment with souls, or. Unfortunately, no. While souls can revive those who have met with an accident, they cannot reverse the effects of old age and illness. A truth be told, many children are born like Milos. The illness has existed for generations, but we've been unable to find a cure. The cause is quite clear, though. The excess lightning in the environment. It's no coincidence the number of cases has risen dramatically these past 30 years. Huh. I reiterate, we could probably do something with the Porxies. It's all my fault. What was that? Your fault. Why do you think that? I'm sorry, Isadora, but I must be going. I promise to make it a proper visit next time, with treats to share. There's no need to apologize, Your Majesty. If it weren't for you, Milos and I wouldn't still be here. Hmm? Thank you, Queen Sphine. Aww. And done. It's my pleasure, Milos. I'll be back soon, so be a good boy. For your mother and for me. Yeah, I don't see why we couldn't use the Porxies to fix their etheric imbalance. Huh. My thanks for accompanying me on the visit. The illness is a part of life in Alexandria, and I thought that you should know about it. We'll find a cure one day, mark my words. We'll make it so unfortunate children like Milos can smile again. Aww. And there we are, 99! And we'll do one more quest today. Her people, her family, and a 675 weapon coffer. Well, let's continue the tour, shall we? Look, you obviously have duties to attend to, citizens to look after. We can stop here if you like. No, no, I do this because I want to, so please do not worry. Next, I'll show you one of the district's most vital facilities, a place called Resolution. To reach it, we'll need to go by way of Laydon 9, where the Aetherite is situated. Eh? Laynode 9? Oh, it is by the Aetherite. That's convenient. Oh, so this is how I get to those disconnected sections, isn't it? The conveyor head will transport you to the government sector, where Resolution is located. The markings on a conveyor indicate its direction, and there is a pair just like it on the other side. Is it safe? Extremely. There's no need to be afraid. Oh, who said I was afraid? Come on, Dekumon. Ah, come on. <laughs> I have been through all manner of teleporters from all manner of different cultures. This one might be one of the coolest. Damn. Here's the spot. This is a government office? Damn. Looks great. And here we are. Resolution, the operational heart of Solution 9. From Resolution, we oversee the running of the district and provide essential services to citizens, such as welfare support and job introductions. It's quicker to show than tell, so let's proceed inside. Hmm. Fancy dramatic camera view. Oh, I bet that thing in the back with the purple fencing is how we're going to have to get up to Zeralja at some point. This is the government offices. That's probably the big elevator that we were warned not to go near. Strange contraptions everywhere you look. Voiced? Really? What's that? An infusion station. It dispenses souls in exchange for credits. <laughs> Through hard work, citizens can obtain the peace of mind provided by spare souls. It's the way of life for Alexandrians, and has been for quite some time. Are you people that accident-prone that you just need to have multiple extra lives in your back pocket at all times? 
but I imagine it must be difficult for outsiders to comprehend. I'm more concerned about where you're getting this surplus of souls you're feeding the Alexandrians. That's what concerns me. That's putting it lightly. To be honest, it sounds disturbing. Still, I won't dismiss it out of hand. Practices like these don't arise from nothing. Why does she suddenly she look like she shut down There's for a, a minute? There's a reason why your culture is the way it is, and I'd like to understand. Won't you tell us some of your realm's history? I'm keen to learn too. With knowledge comes appreciation. Come on, lay it on us. Very well. Be warned, though, that it may take a while. I got time, trust me. Mm -hmm. In the distant past, over a thousand years ago, it said, lightning energy began to swell in our world. Mm. According to ancient records that date back around eight centuries, the rainy season spanned a quarter of the year during which time severe thunderstorms ravaged the land. Four centuries later, this season had lengthened to nearly half the year. Damn. Half a year rainy season? The trend continued, with our ancestors spending longer and longer languishing beneath storm clouds. Crops failed, and livestock starved. No, the Asians were definitely prepping you guys for a rejoining. But amidst this growing desperation, a miraculous material was discovered that promised salvation. Electrope. Hmm. The stuff that's used everywhere here. Yep. Indeed. One day, when out inspecting a forest after lightning had caused a fire, a villager came upon a curious black ore none had seen before. Oh, I wonder if the overuse of Electrope is what caused the destruction of their world. You know, they basically accelerated the lightning imbalance by overusing it. Testing revealed that the ore possessed a singular property. It could store lightning and convert it to other energies. In that instant, the scourge of endless storms became a blessing. Dubbed Electrope, the ore found use in myriad inventions and dramatically improved people's lives. So much so, in fact, that all nations soon became dependent upon it, despite the difficulty of obtaining it in quantity. Oh, this is why she reacted the way she did when we talked about us having it too. They fought a war over this stuff, didn't they? Supply was chronically scarce, and when nations couldn't meet their needs with their own deposits, some resorted to taking Electrope from others. Yep, exactly. I was right. Fighting was isolated and sporadic, until Electrope came to be used in warfare. First in the weaponry of invaders, then in the countermeasures of defenders, and then in every aspect of combat where an advantage might be had. This served only to exacerbate the ore shortage, leading to further escalation. Before long, the entire world was engulfed in a terrible war known as the Storm Surge. Mm. As the war came to a head, Alexandria's neighbor, Lindblom, uh -oh. committed its stores of Electrope to the production of a weapon of mass destruction. Wait a minute. Alexandria? Lindblom? How did I not recognize these from Final Fantasy IX? How? They deployed it on the front lines and triggered a calamity of frightful magnitude. Not even their own scientists had anticipated the force of the lightning that was unleashed. The energy inundated the entire continent, laying it to waste. Oh, shit. 
So that's how your world came to be this way. Damn. I'm put in mind to the Flood of Light. Just like the Flood of Darkness. Sounds an awful lot like an Umbral Calamity. Yeah, no, this, this is definitely reminding me of one of the big floods. You truly know a great many things that I don't. I should like to learn about you too sometime. Ma'am, that is a long conversation. <laughs> or you could just watch the Let's Play series. You'd know everything then. But to continue the tale, the people of Alexandria had already lost much to the war. They lost almost everything else to the Leaven. Those who survived bore deep scars, tormented by the memory of loved ones taken too soon. Though they yet lived, the cruel specter of death was with them always. Uh, is that why you started taking their memories and putting them in the cloud, as it were? So they'd live happy Seeking lives. Seeking a solution, our scientists turned once more to Electrope. And after extensive research, they developed the means to preserve memory and soul. Physical death isn't the end. So long as our memories endure, we may live on. This belief sustained us then, and it sustains us now, granting us comfort. Okay, but if you're just memories in a machine, what then? What's the plan afterwards? That's quite a tale. It's... wait a minute. Is this the FF9 Alexandrian music? It's been so long since I played that game, I'm not sure anymore. Your Majesty, help me! I beg you, help me! Hmm? W what's the matter? I've got no souls left. Not a single one! But the lot at Soul Supply refused to give me any! Please, you must do something! Oh no. <sighs> My apologies, Your Majesty. This man, he does no work. Instead, he drinks his days away on true view. True view. He has only himself to blame if he has no credits for souls. That's not true. I'm a fighter at the Arcadian. Or rather, I was. The Arcadian? Hmm. That sounds familiar. Oh, right. That's the Raid series. Oh. Oh. Is the Raid series going to be like some WWE thing? That sounds awesome. I haven't been allowed to fight because of the King's Decree. It isn't my choice. The King's Decree? I see. You're a brave warrior of the arena. I want to help you, I sincerely do. But I cannot give you preferential treatment. Well, maybe you could hook him up with a new job, he can get credits, and then he can get souls. Or he can learn not to have an extra life in his back pocket. Then open up the Arcadian again, so I can fight. I'm sorry, but that's not my decision to make. The king requires feral souls for war. He doesn't wish for them to be expended on amusements. Oh. Oh. They were doing some shit in there. <laughs> You're useless! A queen in naught but name! Dude, the soldier is gonna backhand you here if you're not careful, buddy. <laughs> Insolent wretch! How dare you take that tone with Her Majesty? It's quite all right. Such things don't bother me, nor do I think ill of this man. Hmm? Hear me. Though I cannot grant you a soul, I mean it when I say I want you to live. I love all of you equally, dearly. You are as family to me, and it pains me to see you deny yourself hope. Hmm. I want you to find a happiness all your own, even if you must grow it from the smallest seed of joy. Out there, somewhere, is a reason for you to smile again. <laughs> we all need to vent our frustrations from time to time. I will always be willing to lend an ear. Yes, Mum. Of course. 
Even without a spare soul, I suppose I'm fine as long as I stay in Solution 9. I reiterate, are your people really that accident prone? I apologize for my rudeness. Good day to you. Dude, what were the fights in the Arcadian like if they needed feral souls? Hmm. Keep your chin up, my friend. And when you feel better, I'm sure you'll find another way to apply your talents. <sighs> that actually was handled rather well. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that. Let's keep moving, shall we? That's all right. That was interesting. Right. I believe we visited all the main facilities. With that, I declare our tour concluded. Hmm. But I still have one big section of the city I haven't been to yet. That man from before. Does that sort of thing happen often? Somewhat. It's unavoidable. Hardships are a fact of life. Our soul management system has sustained our realm for generations, but it isn't without flaws. For one, people have become accustomed to having spare souls. Without them, they feel vulnerable and anxious. Some claim it may also have contributed to a decline in births. Hmm. That seems like a problem. Just thinking out loud, but would it be possible to do away with the system? Ooh. No. Why? The rest of the world gets- I know it isn't easy to change one's beliefs and way of life. The Mamulja had their reasons for their reliance on blessed siblings, much as you have yours for souls. But if we defeated Zorolja, you'd be able to make all the decisions, right? Then we could work together to fix things, restore your realm to where it belongs, and see where we can go from there. Hmm? Come on. Listen to me. There's something that I need to tell you. And she won't get to. Because of the robot. What is it? Uh, actually, never mind. It's nothing of import. No, I'm sure it was of real import. You just won't tell me. Ugh. Well, it was lovely showing you around. Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Thanks so much for the tour. We've learned not only about your realm, but you as well. For now, our priority is Aralja. That's very true. But once we've dealt with him, perhaps I can return the favor and show you to Lihola. Uh, methinks she's already I'd been like there. That very much. I love that my character is still pretty suspicious of her. Because there is definitely some sus going on here with this woman. Mm-hmm. The fact that she outright just said no to abolishing the soul system. It seems I have no choice but to continue down this path. Rather concerning. Forgive me, Vau Wuklamat, but I must disappoint you. Hmm. Hmm. Sveen. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, that was a rather downer cutscene at the end. What does Sveen want you to tell us, I wonder? Well, you can wait for another time. We've been exploring for a while now, and we should probably go to Koyita's meeting point. That'll be back the way we came, I think. Yeah, most likely. Mm-hmm. 
to the other section of town we haven't been yet. All right, this should be the spot. Sveen genuinely cares for her people. I can respect her for that. And thanks to her door, I've come to better understand the lives of Alexandrians. You don't feel so strange and distant anymore. No, but I'm still suspicious. And unfortunately, she hasn't really done much to assuage the suspicions. That's the part that bugs me. Hmm. Anyway, let's see what this new weapon looks like. What the heck? Is all this a paintbrush? No way. No way. Oh, I like that. I love the way the little weapon twists out and kind of unfolds the brush. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, and the palette unfolds too. This is a cool weapon. I like this. <laughs> Alright guys, that's gonna be it for this one. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite, and subscribe to join me for more Eorzean adventures, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.